Hi, everybody, and welcome to this session on attestations, the glue behind secure runtime environments. So today we're going to talk about what attestations are, why they matter to runtime security and secure software supply chains. We'll discuss how to use attestations as part of your security strategy. We'll also discuss VEX or Vulnerability Exploitability Exchange and how that fits into the attestation workflows. And then we'll summarize all of these technologies and, and save some time for Q&A. So first, a quick introduction to myself. I'm Jim Bigwadia, co-founder and CEO at Nirmata. I'm also the uh, creator and a maintainer of Kiverno. And in the Kubernetes community, I serve as a co-chair in the policy and multi-tenancy working groups. So let's start with the language definition of attestations. Quite simply, attestations are evidence or proof of something. It's a declaration. Uh, for example, in the real world, an auditor may attest to some event or some fact, um, just like a notary, a public notary would not help notarize a document and attest to the fact that they have viewed the document and you know the identity of the person holding the document. But where does this fit in the software supply chain and what we want to do you know, to improve runtime security? So the four components you wanna think about are artifacts, metadata, attestations, and policies. First off, any software build will produce artifacts. These artifacts could be binaries that you're gonna execute in your cluster or in your runtime environments. They might be packages that are also deployed. It could be jar or var files, libraries, or container images. So anything that your build will produce, which is gonna help your application execute. Metadata are additional artifacts also produced at build uh, during build time. And metadata, just like uh, you know, in, in a software world, metadata is data that describes other data here, metadata are artifacts that describe or provide more information on existing artifacts or perhaps the build environments. Some examples of metadata could be provenance or uh, data which proves the origin of the artifact or whatever you're deploying. It could be scan results which provide more information like scorecards or vulnerability reports on your artifacts could be a software bill of materials which describes exactly what you know the composition of your artifacts or, or your runtime images or what you're deploying looks like. The next piece is attestations. And like we when we saw the, the language definition, attestations provide proof about artifacts itself. So in this context, attestations are signed statements created using a trusted entity about either the build environment or artifacts produced during the build. For example, an attestation could tell us you know, in a secure manner that the build was executed in a trusted and in a known environment. The attestations can also indicate to us if artifacts comply with various organizational or regulatory standards. For example, you might not want to deploy any container image with a high severity vulnerability, uh, if that's your baseline policy, are the these art the attestations will can help prove that the artifacts you're deploying, like a container image, comply with those requirements. And finally, policies verify attestations and metadata at various phases of execution. For example, right before deployment using admission controls in your cluster, or could be as periodic scans, which occur routinely. Um, and it's important that these are done you know, periodically because policies can change and attestations may also change which in information that might be dynamic. So some examples of policies could be to verify that your build or your artifacts have the right attestations attached to them and also to verify that the metadata that the attestation is verifying complies with your policies. Again, if you're checking for vulnerability reports, the attestation may be, you know, the policies uh, will verify that the attestation includes the right metadata 
produced by the right tools that you expect it to and has the right results to allow that container, that image, or other artifact to run in your environment. So summarizing this, artifacts are created by builds, um, which you know could be as part of your CI CD tools. Metadata also produced by your CI CD tools describes the artifacts and the build environment. Attestations provide proof or evidence of these builds and artifacts and are created by a trusted entity, typically you know, a trusted build process or something with a machine identity that can be verified. And then finally, policies are used to verify these attestations if, if for a defense in depth or a zero trust uh, strategy across your supply chain. So now that we understand the concept of attestations and where attestations fit in a software supply chain, let's dive in deeper and talk about the implementation details. So to do that, I'd like to introduce Salsa. So Salsa, or the supply chain levels for software artifacts, is a set of standards being created by the OpenSSF Supply Chain Integrity Working Group to help secure um, software supply chains. So Salsa is a security framework which provides a checklist of different uh, requirements and controls to prevent the tampering and to check and verify the integrity of packages and infrastructure across the software supply chain. So currently Salsa is in alpha status, but there's very active work being done within the community itself to define Salsa requirements, as well as a set of generators and provenance generators um, and verifiers to help with securing software supply chain. So Salsa, Salsa defines four different levels of compliance. And these levels check you know, different requirements across source code, build environments, provenance data produced during the build environments, and various categories, including software code reviews and other aspects of your um, overall uh, software delivery process. So level one is fairly easy to attend. It requires proper documentation or some verification of the build proven, uh, process itself and unsigned provenance. So fairly straightforward and simple to attend. Level two gets a little bit more difficult. Uh, it requires tamper resistance um, in the build environment. So typically if you're running a hosted build environment or service, level two um, is possible to attain by, you know, uh, given the security environment of the host or the managed service you're using. Uh, if you have your internal build services, then level two requires proof that, you know, your builds are tamper resistant. Um, and you also need to produce signed provenance as part of uh, level two Salsa compliance. So this signed provenance is where attestations start coming into play. Level three requires further checks where the provenance now needs to be non-falsifiable, which means that you know, it cannot be you know, tampered with, uh, it cannot be uh, somebody who has access to the build environment cannot falsify or change that provenance data. And it requires extra security controls in your host systems itself. And level four goes even further, requiring two-person code reviews and completely sealed or hermetic build environments, which cannot be you know, influenced by external factors or external systems itself. So within Salsa, the definition of a software attestation is simply an authenticated statement uh, or metadata uh, about a software artifact or a collection of artifacts. Salsa uses a format called from Intoto. Intoto is another um, open source project within the Linux Foundation related to software supply chain security. And Intoto has a specification for uh, creating signed statements, which Salsa also leverages for attestations. So the attestation model looks something like this. So starting from the right, you have bundles 
and bundles can create uh, contain multiple attestations. Each attestation consists of an envelope, a message, and a signature. And the message component of the attestation is where the Intoto statement format comes into play. A statement contains a subject and a predicate, and a predicate can be any custom data, or there are standards being developed for predicates for things like scan reports or predicates for different you know, pieces of common information. Predicates um, in, within your statement itself, it will link back to the artifact which is being verified. Um, and you know, your predicate can provide further links uh, to other uh, things which can be looked up by policy engines or, or during policy checks. So putting all of this together, um, you can have multiple attestations produced. You can bundle these together and then you can you know, use the Intoto format to secure these attest uh, and secure and sign these attestations and attach them to, uh, to your OCI registries of, uh, along with your images itself. So here's an example of what an attestation might look like. So here you, here you have a, uh, a, an artifact which is identified by its hash, by SHA uh, ID. And what this is saying is that this particular artifact was built by a, a you know, GitHub action, which there is a link to that GitHub action, and it's signed by GitHub itself, which is acting uh, in this case as a managed build service um, with its own, with an identity provide through an OIDC token. So all of this goes into an envelope which can also be signed uh, to complete the, you know, to uh, complete the signed attestation and deliver that securely. Um, according to the, in the Salsa attestation model, uh, the tool stack looks like this. The envelope is signed using DSSE or dead simple signing envelope. Uh, the statements are Intoto attestations or in a format which is being developed within the Intoto project. The predicates are JSON, uh, and this could be either custom JSON statements, could be things like scan reports or other standards being developed. Um, you, you can have bundles of attestations, and these multiple attestations are combined using a specification called JSON lines. And then the storage lookup is not defined yet in the Salsa spec, but typically these attestations are attached to your image using, you know, um, within an OCI registry itself, either as a layer in an image or with other, you know, standards being developed within the OCI registry specification to be able to securely attach metadata to images itself. So here's what this looks like in practice. If you have an Intoto attestation, so here on the left, it has the payload type, the payload and signatures. The payload type itself you know, is well-defined, but the payload is where the statement begins. And as shown in the next box on the right, each statement you know, starts with a declaration of the, uh, that is the in-total statement, the version of the specification it has. And then the statement has a subject, predicate types, and predicates. So the predicate is the actual data that will be checked using policies. But all of this put together gives us an, a secure implementation of taking metadata produced during build time and in build environments and at build time, and then signing them using a trusted entity like a GitHub action or some other build um, builder with, a, with an identity that can be trusted uh, and creating this in total statement, which can then be you know, attached to an OCI image. So in this next section, let's look at some live demos of how all of this comes together using six store to create as well as sign the attestations and then Kiverno policies to verify the attestations. So first off, let's understand a little bit more what these tools do and you know how they work. So starting with six store. So six store contains three major tools, cosine, full CO and Raycore. Cosign is used for signing 
pretty much anything. In our example, we're going to use this to sign attestations. So attestations being, you know, again, in total statements, uh, which we'll use cosign to sign, as well as then push into an OCI registry. Fulcio, which is the other component in SIGSTORE, uh, acts as a web-based OIDC authority, which can generate temporary certificates, um, and then which are used for signing, um, and then the, that those certificates are actually just thrown away, but only after the signing event is recorded in record, the third component, which is a transparency log. SIGSTOR also has a policy controller and another component for Git signing, but we're not going to use these components as part of this demo. So Kiverno is the policy engine that we're going to use to verify these signed attestations produced by the SIGSTOR components. Kiverno is a CNCF project. It's in the incubation phase, um, and it acts as a Kubernetes native policy engine. What that means is Policies in Kiverno are Kubernetes resources. They do not use any external policy language, but they are declaratively YAMLs, much like Kubernetes resources themselves. The policy reports and results are also Kubernetes resources available inside the cluster, which can be managed using standard Kubernetes tools. Kiverno integrates directly with the control plane. It acts as an admission server. Um, as well as, you know, it, it um, can query the API server for additional information to enrich policies. It also has the ability to cache things like config maps. So really, you know, understanding how Kubernetes works, um, you know, even patterns like owner references or how pods and pod controller works, Kiverno can take advantage of these type of things to make it easier to write and manage policies for Kubernetes itself. With that, let's dive in into the demo and I'll switch into my console. And what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna look at how we can create attestations uh, as part and, and attach them into your OCI image using you know, uh, six stores cosign. And once these attestations are published, we'll look at how to verify them using Kiverno. All right, so I'm gonna switch into my console and what we'll look at here, let me clear the screen. And I have a cluster in, with Kiverno installed. So if I do get namespace, I see Kiverno is already in here. This is my local mini cube. Um, uh, so let's say if I do get deploy um, in the Kiverno namespace. So, Actually, let's just check the logs for Kiverno. Um, what this will do, I don't need the W here. So I see Kiverno is up and running and the logs, everything looks okay. If I do get cluster policy, at this point, I don't have any cluster policies. Um, CPOL is a short for cluster policy. So I don't have any installed, so it returns no resources found. All right, so before we do anything else with Kiverno, the first thing we wanna do is actually sign a, an image. So if I do Docker images, I have a Tomcat, you know, a demo image that I created. Um, it's a Java Tomcat image. Um, and I've just recently built this image as you can see. And what we're gonna do is I've already published this event into my registry, but what I want to do now is also to be able to you know, check for um, uh, or attach an attestation into this image. So if I go into my repo and if I look at versions, I see that V1 has been published. Um, and what we'll do is we'll create an attestation for, for that V1 image. So in this repo itself, I also have a scan you know, .json, which I produced using Trivi. So the command I ran for that was just simply to, you know, produce that, uh, tri you know, Trivi, but I produced this, uh, a scan using Trivi, but I did that in JSON format. So if you look at the file over here, um, just in memory, this is what, it, or in my editor, 
this is what it looks like. And through Trivi, I was able to produce the scan report. And as you can see, it has you know lots of information on different vulnerabilities, et cetera, which we want to now create an attestation using. So to do that, I'm gonna use cosine and we'll use the cosine command. So cosine can sign um, container Im images itself, but it can also sign attestations. So instead of the cosine sign command, which I would use to sign in container image, what I'm gonna use is cosine attest. And to that attest, I'm gonna pass in the image that I want to create the attestation for. I'm gonna use a public key to sign that attestation. And I had previously generated public private, a public private key pair using cosine itself. And the predicate I'm gonna provide is the scan.json file we looked at. And with the type, so the statement, the predicate type I want to use um, is, and this could be any string, but I chose to just say triviaquasec.com scan v2. And what I'm gonna do is if there's a, a existing predicate with the same type in or existing attestation, we will replace it. So with that, you know, when I'm signing it, it's gonna ask me for my private key. It's gonna use that payload and cosine should then have attached that into my to my OCI registry. So if we go back here and we look at V1 and I refresh, what I'm expecting to see now is that an, an attestation was just created and pushed into my OCI registry, which is associated with the hash, um, the digest of that image itself. So at this point, we have an attestation for the image. And what I wanna do now is verify that attestation using a policy, right? So I'm gonna use this Paul Kiverno policy, which I have, and this Kiverno policy is using a public key to check whenever there's an image which matches this pattern. So if it matches the name demo Java Tomcat, it's coming from this GitHub you know, a container registry. Um, if it matches that pattern, it's going to check that it is um, it has a attestation signed using this public key, and then also it's going to match within that attestation that the predicate type matches what we expect, which is triviaquasec.com scan v2, and also that attestation it's going to parse the JSON, make sure that the scanner URI matches. So if we go back to the scan dot json we see over here there's a scanner there's a uri which tells us you know which version of trivi produced that and it's going to also further check um, this is using a james path expression within my kiverno policy to parse the results and check for vulnerabilities and to make sure that there's no vulnerabilities with a score greater than eight so if we run this command and the nice thing about the this format is it's very easy to test this also on the command line, right? So if I kind of just uh, you know do this, run this command, and check for you know the exact same expression that I had in my Kiverno policy, I can check over here and let's change this to eight. What I'm expecting is it's showing me that there's no vulnerabilities which are higher than eight. Um, if we switch to seven or something else, let's let's say if we switch to six, I see that there's two vulnerabilities with medium scores, which are reported as part of my image itself. So let's apply that policy. So I'll do kubectl apply, and we want to do check, uh, I think it's local attestations.yaml. Okay, so now if I do kubectl, get cpol again for cluster policy. I see I have one, you know, at a cluster policy. And now if we do, if we try to run our Tomcat image, uh, we will do v1 is the one we want it to match. Uh, and I'm just gonna dry run it. So we'll see if that is accepted or not. So at this point that image got accepted because it has the matching attestation. And just to prove that this, you know, if the attestation doesn't exist, what we can go is we can go and delete that attestation from the registry, right? 
So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. Um, and let's see what happens if the attestation doesn't exist. So I still have my V1 image, which I can pull and check. But if the attestation doesn't exist, I would expect the policy in this case to fail and say, hey, there's a problem here. You can, can't run this image. It, as it says here, no matching attestations, right? So that works. Um, and it's fairly easy, as you saw, to be able to sign it with cosign just using public private keys and to verify it. However, if we were to try and you know achieve um, again a higher level of salsa you know compliance with this, like as we were discussing with salsa level three, uh, the requirement there is that your attestation um, cannot be you know tampered with. Or, or cannot be falsified, right? So in this case, the problem with just using a public key and not checking any provenance data is that anybody who gets a hold of this public key um, could potentially you know, try and falsify this data. Um, and keys, of course, you know, are, are difficult to manage. They need to be shared and secured themselves, which creates another set of problems. So this certainly is far from ideal. It's a good starting point, but um, you know what we want to do is we want to create and sign these attestations in a manner which is non-falsifiable and which cannot be easily tampered with, either inadvertently or you know even by you know sometimes by whether it may not have to be a malicious actor, could be a trusted user who's just trying to. Uh, you know, figure out a way to work around some policies or compliance checks. So how can we do that, right? So instead of signing with the public key, what we can now do is we can start, we can use the keyless approach uh, or what Cosign and Sixtor calls the keyless approach to signing. In this case, we are gonna use Fullcio to generate a temporary ID um, or a temporary um, certificate, which will then be used to sign. Uh, and then we're gonna use the identifier embedded and some data embedded in that certificate to verify. So let's take a look actually at a policy first, and then we'll take a look at how to build this uh, with using GitHub Actions uh, as our trusted builders and in our build environment. So in this case, um, if you're using keyless, instead of a public key um, as a, a tester, in my Kiverno policy, I have a keyless attester. And here, what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna, uh, for my keyless attester, I'm gonna make sure that it's the subject of the certificate is a workflow that I know, and the issuer is actually GitHub because this is that uh, the, the certificate is um, received using uh, GitHub's OIDC. In addition to that, there's several other things that you know we want to check in the certificate. We want to make sure that the trigger for creating was you know uh, actually a GitHub push. We can also check the workflow SHA ID. So in this case, I'm going to check for you know to. Uh, not just the name of the workflow, which is in the subject, but the SHA ID. Now, one thing with GitHub itself is you can have reusable workflows. So your workflow may be in a different repository from where it's being executed. So it's very important to actually verify the workflow SHA ID for off the one, the reusable workflow that you're executing and not just the, you know, where the workflow, the repo in which the workflow was executed. So here you can also check the actual name of the, the reusable workflow and the repo that it came from, uh, which all, all of this can be now authenticate or part of the authentication step uh, to make sure that the right trusted builder in, in the right environment has created the attestation we want. So to do all of this, we you know can create a GitHub act uh, workflow, and this sample GitHub workflow that I have has four steps. It builds the image, it scans the image, so so um, then generates a, an SBOM, um, and also then uh, you know creates 
the attestations uh, using cosine and attaches them to the OCI registry. So building the image is a fairly standard and straightforward step. So here you would use you know, your Docker builder or any other image builder you wish. Scanning the image, in this case, I'm using Trivi. Um, and as you can see here, we're using a Trivi GitHub action and it's you know, producing the image scan, which we're saving as a file called scan.json. Um, the next step uh, after that would be to create the SPOM. And for that, I'm using, you know, in this case, Gripe, which uh, is, uh, you know, or uh, uh, we're actually using SIFT from Encore to create the SBOM. Gripe is a vulnerability scanner from Encore, but we'll use, because we're using a different scanner, here we're using, you know, SIFT for the SBOM itself, and we're saving that in Cyclone DX format, and also, which can also then be created or, or used to create an attestation. And then in the final step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of these inputs, the uh, provenance data that was created as part of the container build itself. We're gonna take um, the SBOM and the scan report, and we're gonna assign them using cosine and publish all of this into our OCI registry where, where we have attached our image. So if you kind of look at all of this and in, in GitHub workflow itself, if we see the, the registry here and I go to the build that I ran, so the build takes a few minutes to run, so I'm not gonna do that or rerun it again. But I, if I check all of these steps, what happened is first it build the image, uh, which also creates the provenance file. Um, and this, to do that build, you know, create the provenance file what we're doing is we're using a Salsa framework GitHub action. This is a sample action. And once that provenance file is created, um, we're, we can attach it to the image as you can see over here. Uh, and then also from the scan, as well as the creation of the SBOM, similarly, we're attaching these files. And then finally, in the last step, we're creating attestations using cosine like we saw. So that's how this pipeline would execute. And the nice thing is when you know, the pipeline executes, um, one of the important steps over here is to get an identifier for the GitHub um, builder itself, right? So all of this, the way it's happening is because um, we're using OIDC tokens, uh, GitHub, the builder is getting a trusted ID. And that token is what's integrated with now the six store tools uh, to be able to generate a temporary certificate, which embeds you know, the information that we want uh, for the builder, as well as some of these other pieces of metadata, which tells us, which we can then verify um, when we're trying to prove that these attestations were actually created in a trusted environment and were not tampered with or non-falsified uh, as per the SALSA requirements. So, Given that, let's take a look at, you know, let's apply a different policy and, and see what happens, right? So I'm going to delete this policy and we'll um, install the other policy, which can verify that, um, which can verify the image which was produced as part of that pipeline itself. So I'll apply, in this case, we want just attestations. And this is the key list verifier, as we saw. And now if I do kubectl run, um, and if I do, just, just as a test, if I do v1, this should not pass because it was signed using the public key. Uh, but if we go ahead and then also check using, you know, um, so this as expected, it says no matching attestations because it couldn't find, and for this image, any attestation signed using you know, the GitHub, um, the, the keyless identifier that we wanted. So now if we run this um, for the actual version produced by the pipeline, what we expect to see is that this policy will allow that image to run because it has all of the right information in it. 
In this last section, I'm going to talk about VEX or Vulnerability Exploitability Exchange. So we all know that vulnerabilities are hard to manage at scale, um, even or even for small projects, right? Scanners typically produce too much noise, and any static analysis tool can't really determine if a vulnerability actually applies to a component or an image, uh, or you know if some features of that what's being reported are being used or not used. And of course, upgrading to the latest version is costly, it's time consuming, and may not even always be possible. So VEX attempts to solve these problems. What VEX is, it's a draft uh, spec as part of the OSE CSAF for the Common Security Advisory Framework 2.0. And it basically allows a software supplier or some other party knowledgeable in that software to assert the status of vulnerabilities in that particular product. So VEX documents are meant to be machine readable. They're dynamic and expected to change as information becomes available about vulnerabilities. And as you know, the uh, as more um, information may be attached to a CV or to a vulnerability report. VEX documents work really well with SBOMs or software build of materials, as well as CVEs when, which are produced or reported in scan reports. So a typical VEX document contains product information. It will contain a CVE um, or an ID. It will contain status, which the you know, party providing the report can supply. This could be not affected, affected, fixed, or under investigation. And based on the status, there's details on the threat or the mitigation. And if the vulnerability is not affected, for example, there can be details to provide why that vulnerability does not apply in that particular situation or to that component. And if there's mitigation steps like certain configuration, those can be provided as well. And then finally, there's a note section, which is this freeform text for additional details. So what this allows us to do is now putting together VEX uh, as well as attestations we can imagine a workflow where whenever there's a new vulnerability reported, the product team can either analyze the vulnerability and say, yes, this is relevant and provide a fix, which could contain updates or other information, or they can publish a VEX document as an attestation, which can be verified by the receiver to make sure that it's received, uh, the attestation is produced by a trusted entity and that you know a particular uh, vulnerability can then be allowed. So all of this can you know with attestations and what we were looking at before in the demo can now be then be automated and can be checked as part of a secure software supply chain. So this is really can be a potential game changer for managing vulnerabilities uh, within enterprises and also across enterprises which is why a lot of folks are very excited about VEX and what that means uh, to, the, to securing software supply chain. All right, so to summarize what we've gone through, uh, certainly signing, an Im signing images, verifying images um, as you're deploying them into your clusters is a fantastic start for, for security. But attestations uh, provide a lot of additional data which is required for higher level of compliance like SALSA level three. Uh, what we looked at is using cosign from SIGSTOR uh, to sign and attach attestations to OCI images, and then Kiverno to verify these attestations through policies, which can be run as admission control uh, checks or, or even as background scans. And finally, we briefly talked about VEX, which solves several major issues with the whole vulnerability management workflows we're used to today, and it fits very well into the whole, into attestations and being able to deliver VEX documents as attestations as part of you know, OCI images. Thank you.